Hey, what's up, everyone? You're currently tuned into Litox Demands Remain Unwritten on KCSB FM 91.9 in Santa Barbara and netnetradio.com out of Tijuana. Today, Litox and I welcome Alex Gonzalez from Pleasant Valley Records and Late Bloomers. How you doing, Alex? How you doing, Alex? I'm good, good. That's what I like to see. Dude, so we were kind of just like chatting like briefly before the interview and stuff. Like your birthday's coming up, right? Mm-hmm. How old you turn in? 19. Uh, 29. Damn, hell yeah, dude. That's sick. Almost the big 3-0. End of an era. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know exactly. dude. End of, end of an era almost. Uh, do, you, do you feel like in this last decade you've accomplished something that at 20 you would have thought would have been impossible? Uh, no, when I was 20, my mind was in a different place. Like I was going to college to study to, you know, be a physical therapist and all this stuff, but Goodness. <laughs> uh, so it wasn't music wasn't even really in the picture or anything like that. Dude, one of my my bosses was actually like telling me this is like funny, dude. He was giving like a total like dad, you know, moment or something to like me and like one of my un- other like coworkers that's like in our twenties or whatever. And our boss was basically just saying, like, once you guys hit 30, you're gonna have a completely different mindset on life. Like everything's gonna change for you and all this stuff, or like you're just going to look back on like your twenties and be like, wow, dude, I was in such a completely different place in my life. But I guess that's also just a really long time. So I feel like it's just natural for that to happen. But yeah, I mean, it was a good decade though, for sure. I had fun. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> so you said you're going to like Big Bear for a week or you're spending part uh, of it? Just, in a, Big Bear? just a couple of days, two days. And we're just going to like hang out. We got a nice Airbnb with the jacuzzi and all this. So. That's gonna, sick, dude. That'll be that'll be so maybe, fun. Yeah, just maybe hike a little bit and you know whatever else there is. Are you into like mountain biking at all? No. Okay, because I was gonna say they turn like the ski slopes into like a bike park and like everybody like oh. yeah like mountain biking is like really big oh, over there. Great. Yeah, it's like I pretty sick. Meaning to do that that's to do great. like a big bear because I never see I've never seen it during summer and I imagine it's just gorgeous in its own way up there. I've never been to Big Bear yet, but you know, I eventually want to go. My friend has like a season pass to like the bike park, so maybe I can go and hit that. I'm not good at mountain biking, so I'd stay on like the easy slopes all day, but like <laughs> <laughs> I- Oh yeah. I try to I stay off things with like wheels like skateboards and bikes and all the time. Dude, yeah. Every time I step on one, I just get hurt nowadays you know (laughs) no or it's like i bought like a mountain bike like um during like peak covid or whatever because like my same friend that has like a season pass was like dude let's go mountain biking and like i got it and like i like to just ride around like you know on dirt trails and stuff but hitting jumps and stuff so scary dude like i can't even handle that like no no I wouldn't even attempt. I mean, I'll ride, I'm, I'm down to ride a bike around town or whatever, but nothing like, you know, in the wilderness or anything like that. Exactly, dude. Um, dude, so you also have like a show coming up with Late Bloomers, right? That's what we've heard. Yeah, we're playing. We're playing, uh, I think it's August 6th at the Ventura Music Hall with uh, Mystic Braves, Sourfin, which I think you've uh, yeah, had dude. on. And then I'm not sure about the other band, but those, those two I know. I think I saw maybe like... F- uh walter Mitty and his walter Mitty's playing or something is that oh it's walter etc walter etc et yes he used to have like a yeah. project called like walter Mitty and his like makeshift orchestra or something like that he was on this oh, label cool. yeah, he was on this label that like i really loved um a while ago that i still like called like lauren records uh they were like really involved in like the vlhs scene and like pomona and like when emo and stuff was like in that revival and whatnot um yeah they're cool that's sick. I think that'll be a fun show. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I guess Alex, have you picked up any like new hobbies or anything like since uh, I don't know the last like few months um, or anything? Any like interesting stories or anything? Not really. I mean, my hobbies like everything like kind of revolves around like the you know the label and playing my own music. But uh-huh. I learned to screen print a little bit, so that's about how I've been making. Uh, our shirts lately so oh sick dude um, so how do you how do you do that do you like make the screens yourself and stuff no i haven't done that yet but what i have what i do is i, I hit up a company who uh who just burns the screen for me and then mm-hmm. i get it from them and then i do you know i bottle the ink and all the squeegees mm-hmm. and, oh, and nice. stuff like that. dude that's actually really sick uh what's good what's the turnaround time there or you know how has have you gotten faster as it progressed 
Um, I usually, well, I'm, I made a big batch and then, um, it, it took me maybe like, like to order the screen. It took a day, like the next day I went and picked it up yeah. and then, Oh really? That's there, fast, dude. You know? Yeah. So it's way better than, you know, to me, it's way better than like hitting up a company and waiting like for their, them to do oh, it and all this stuff. hundred percent. That's efficient. Oof. And it's also like way more DIY, which just makes it sicker. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I, that's what I've always been kind of about just doing it doing things myself and and just like figuring it out for myself and stuff yeah for sure i'm gonna have to uh have a separate conversation with you about how to do that because uh i want to make some shirts and stuff eventually but um, oh we could yeah for sure yeah dude that'd be so sick uh so alex i guess like you know the reason that you're here is like to talk about like your label pleasant valley for the most part you have some cool stuff coming out but i guess like before we like deep dive into that um let's get some more like background on you so like your label is like mostly like i guess locally based like 805 ventura county stuff um how long have you been like living in ventura county like oxnard or um probably since i was maybe like three or four we moved my family moved from uh i was born in san diego and then uh, we moved to san Bernardino for a little bit when i was like a baby and then Mm -hmm. we finally moved to ventura probably like in the mid 90s oh, and sick. Then i lived in ventura, i lived in ventura and then i moved to oxnard like in 1999 with my family and uh so yeah yeah so since then so pretty much my whole life so that i can remember that's cool that. dude yeah maddie's actually from san diego so i guess you guys have a little in common there but um yeah yeah. Anyways, dude, that's cool, Alex. So I guess like also like what was like your your intro? I guess like give us like how you started getting involved in music, like your earliest like recollections of being like, okay, music is like going to become like a hobby of mine. Like this is sick. And like some of the bands you like first started like deep diving and stuff like that. Um. Well, from uh, as, as far as music goes, it's, um, my dad has always been uh, into music. Like he's he has like um, a bunch of records. Like when I was Growing up, he basically like hoarded like any record he could find at any thrift store around here. Oh, that's actually so really he had, like, a huge, big thrift store. He had a huge collection. Yeah, yeah. He had a huge collection of records. It was like probably like ten thousand records or something like that. Something crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was all you know classic rock type stuff. Like the Beatles was one of my favorite things. And yeah, you know, that's sick. Just, just you know, any just stuff we would find at a record store, basically. You know what I mean? Or I mean a thrift store. Mm-hmm. Just, you know. But um but yeah, that was my intro like to music. My dad introduced me to like, you know, the Beatles, like I said, and Led Zeppelin and all these other bands that just classic rock type stuff. And then later on he bought me a uh, a guitar from a thrift store, like an electric guitar. That's sick. Um Yeah, he just had it and all and then he kind of just, Oh, I bought this for you randomly. And I, at first I didn't really show much interest in it and then uh and then later on, I picked it up and started learning like Led Zeppelin riffs, like you know, Hell yeah. just the basic oh, like yeah. like rock riffs. Yeah. And then from there, I just like uh, I just kept on doing it, and I realized I was you know good enough to play with other people, and then you know then it went from there. That's cool, dude. So I guess like, what was kind of like your your intro to like DIY culture in like the local area? Like, how did you start getting involved in that? So like, you're you're li- already like listening to records that like your dad would show you, and you're learning like Led Zeppelin riffs on like your guitar and stuff like when when did you start like going to shows and start like being like oh there's actually like a cool like underground culture happening around me um well like i said all throughout high school and before that i wouldn't like i wasn't really into uh like music i like to listen but i wasn't into playing it and stuff Mm -hmm. like that i was more into sports and stuff like that but um i had this friend named raul who i went to high school with Mm -hmm. and he was a good friend of mine uh during high school and he was always into like punk and hardcore and stuff from Uh uh you know from around here and he would go to shows and later on after high school like uh i started hanging out with him a lot more and that's pretty much you know i'd tag along with with him and some other friends to shows and um yeah and eventually i uh eventually he was he was playing in soul hex uh so that's how i got my first uh like spot in a band was through him oh really okay that's sick it's beautiful yeah, and so that's how it kind of started. Like I started going on shows, and then I joined the band he was in. So yeah, he he was like a big influence on like early, you know, my early like music life. Yeah, that's sick, and that's how you met like Eddie and everything too. Yeah, he was he he knew Eddie, and he was in you know, in, in Slugs. Yeah, exactly. So that's how it all got started. 
Dude, that's really cool. Um, and you're talking about going to like punk shows and stuff and like this area has generally had like a really rich like punk scene since like the 80s or something. Like can you talk or like shed a little bit of light on I guess just like I don't know what narco is for people that are unaware. Um, I'm actually I'm not the best person asking that. I'm, I'm like uh, I I do like punk and hardcore, but it's not like my main thing. I feel you. But I can that. say that uh, the, the music scene uh, in in like hardcore and stuff has been around since like the you know eighties and nineties, and mm-hmm. bands like Ill Repute and stuff like that were were big, and and now like now it's gotten pretty big again. It's crazy. Like all the shows that you see are hardcore shows, mm-hmm. and you know a lot of people go to them. It's crazy. For sure. It's like insane how many people are like showing up to like the hardcore shows nowadays. It's like, yeah, it's sick. I think it's cool that it's like super active, you know, and there is a little bit of crossover in terms of like the indie scene and stuff a little bit, but like, I don't know, you know, it, it, I guess like the scene has just always been so rich. I didn't really know, I guess like what hardcore and stuff like was until I started going to like more local shows out here, but it's just like crazy how like rich of a culture is and like how like diehard like this area is for it and stuff, you know? Yeah, it's pretty nuts. So I guess like what what kind of music like were you listening to at that time? Like what kind of shows were you going to? Like who was playing? What was the scene like at that time other than like outside of like Nardcore and stuff? And like what year is this, by the way, if uh, you can put like a number on it? This, uh, this was like 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015 okay. kind of. Mm-hmm. Like beginning, beginning of, the, of, you know, teens or whatever. But um, we were just going to house shows and stuff like that. Whoever was playing... Mm-hmm. Uh, and whoever's backyard, we'd just go and That's you know, hang out because uh-huh. there wasn't much to do. Uh-huh. And uh, it was mostly yeah, just backyard shows and stuff like that. And like, um, like before I was in in uh, the band with Eddie and, and Roll and Soul Hex, like I would go to their shows, and, you know, just hang out. And uh-huh. uh, it was bands like Soul Hex, and then like some of the backyard shows. I don't know if you guys have heard of like Sordo and stuff like that. Oh yeah, like that power violence band. Sure, but- yeah, so they were, you know, pretty popular back then too. And just, just like I said, just random backyard shows. Can you think of like any, I guess, like notable people who I guess were, I don't know, formative to you at that point or like any like formative bands to you? Like anybody that was playing around that time? Um, well, there was, uh, I was like, Eddie had introduced me to the bands like Sea Lions and uh, Catwalk. Uh-huh. Um so people like that, and then I knew this other guy named named Bobby Ray who who um who was making music at the time, and he he really encouraged me, and I looked up to him a lot in terms of that because he really encouraged me to like record my music, and he he showed an interest early on, basically, and that really like uh, helped me out, I think. That's cool. Like, who what what bands is like Bobby Ray playing in? Because I know like Marvin always mentions Bobby Ray. <laughs> and Bobby-, Bobby Ray he he played in uh, in Catwalk for a while, okay. which was uh, one of the Band, one of the bands that uh, you know that were around back then, and then uh, uh-huh. after that, he was making his own music, after, like under his own name. Uh-huh. That's sick. Uh, so I guess, like as well, were there any like cool like labels or anything that you were a fan of back then that were kind of like putting the music out at that time? Yeah, like I said, uh, so Eddie introduced me to like Sea Lions and Catwalk, and and they were on a label called Yay Yay mm-hmm. Records, which was like a local Oxnard label. Yeah. And um, they, what they did, they were doing a lot of seven inches and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. And they're releasing, releasing singles for a, a bunch of area bands. Like mm-hmm. uh, there was Watercolor Paintings, there was mm-hmm. the Tardins, there was, you know, Sea Lions and Catwalk. And uh, the I think it's Maria. And mm-hmm. those are pretty much the main bands that were, they were putting out like seven inch singles for. And, uh, and you can still find them around too. It's really like. In, in in like Salzers, you'll find one once in a while. So it's oh really, it's that's sick. Kind of still out, yeah, they're still out there floating around. So yeah, so I thought that was really cool. I know. I actually found uh, the Yay Records compilation at Amoeba, which is like my oh, like yeah. It, it was random, dude. It was Amoeba. Like I always go to like the compilation section at like Amoeba because like I've always had luck there because I feel like people aren't necessarily always looking over there, you know. Um, it's not a section. It's not a looking section. It's literally like the tiniest little section. And I was just flipping through it and I was like, whoa, this is all like 805 people. Like, this is kind of insane. Um, and that was kind of like my first intro into like looking into like the past of like the 805 scene, sort of, you know, it, like distant past. Cause I guess it wasn't that long ago. It was like maybe like 10 years ago or something that they were super active, right? Um, yeah. It was like 2010, kind of around that time. Exactly. Like I would say kind of like when it was almost like more twee, like those twee band type 
type oh. deal that was like going down at that time. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much, uh, you know, that's what I, re- what I was really into. Uh, like, that kind of, that style of music. Yeah. Like yeah. Twee and everything. Yeah, dude, that stuff was like, like huge. And I guess like another, uh, like way that I was able to like look into like, I guess like the scene of the past or something it was also through like old, uh, radio shows from KCSB that were kind of like, I don't know playing a bunch of that stuff or hosting people like Josh Redman have like was, you know, in watercolor paintings and he had like a bunch of those bands like play on his show and stuff. Um, so yeah. yeah, That's really cool. I'd I'd be interested to hear some of those, some of those old, uh, you know, performances. I'll send you his like website, dude. He has like everything documented on his website. It's like five, four, three, two fun.org. I'll send you a link. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he has like all the performances. All the way back then. Dude, he has every single. Oh, he, he is a, Josh documents everything, everything to the to the nth degree. We're talking television, books, music. It's board. crazy. It's crazy. Josh, it's it's really beautiful that they knew exactly what they wanted to do with that. I yeah. guess my my question is at that time though, especially in the 20 kind of 12 to 14 window you've talked about, were you listening to music on cassettes? Were you really just streaming stuff in terms or were you just kind of vibing out there in you know how shows? Um well, I didn't get into cassettes until later, um, but definitely records was a big thing for me. You know, mm-hmm. I had a little record player in my room. I'd always be playing records and um, streaming YouTube. You know, just basically YouTube stuff. Yeah. Was yeah. my was MySpace still a thing at that time? Oh goodness. No, I don't. I don't think so. No. <laughs> were okay. seven inches a thing at that time though? Still, did you encounter bands that were making some sort of profit margin or like really happy with their seven inch, and you were picking those up? Um, well, like I said, uh, a lot of the A stuff I was able to find like kind of second hand, but mm-hmm. I don't know, I don't know really like, uh, what their, you know, profit was, but I mean, it must've been good. Cause they're still, you know, being loved out there and yeah, you know, still people playing them and stuff. Yeah. I found a couple like yay seven inches, like in the KCSB library too, at some point. Oh. Um, yeah. I was flipping through. I remember there was this one that I was like, who is this dude? This is like the sickest, like little, like, and it was in like a like hand printed sleeve and stuff like that. And I was just like, who is this dude? This is so sick. I saw a little yay records on there. I forget who it was, but that was like one of like the first ones that I had found when I was also like diving deep into like the KCSB, like seven inches and stuff. But, um, yeah. And I'm yeah, like, that's part of it. For, that's part of it for me too. Cause I liked, uh, I liked how like they literally did it. They pretty much got the record press and then printed out the sleeves themselves and put them in like a sleeve, another like plastic sleeve. Yeah. And like, yeah, that little, like, uh, like you know printed out little like a catalog list of every release like i thought that was cool to like, yeah see just, i know, thought that was old and look i thought that was so sick too you know because it's like it was all just like diy it looked like they just did this in like their bedroom or something which i'm sure they did you know um that type of deal it just makes it like super accessible uh we had like chatted like briefly too uh like i guess in like the last interview that we did with late bloomers but uh i know your label like pleasant valley is kind of like a nod in a way towards like the yay records compilation i guess we can start talking a little bit more about like your uh, label pleasant valley yeah what we we're trying to lead into i guess do you want to talk a little bit more about like that and like where the name came from and like where the general inspiration came from and stuff oh um that definitely had like some influence on it but i live on the street pleasant valley okay in yeah in Oxnard. so that was kind of like uh the obvious thing to do for me i was just like I can't think of a good name, so I might just name it after my street. And yeah, <laughs> I got I got a fun. I write for Tabs Out, and the guy who runs that blog, his his old label that he no longer does, nine oh five tapes, was a reference to the street address. Oh, really? That's so, sick. Yep, yep. <laughs> I feel that a very it's common great. thing. That's just how you got to do it. I mean, that's some situated stuff right there, Alex. Yeah, it worked out pretty well because because like the imagery of it is basically like. Uh, there's a, like a, right next to where I live at. There's like a, a str- like a you know fields and then uh, mm-hmm. electrical towers that are like pretty distinct mm-hmm. throughout like the area. So that's what, kind of where that came from. Oh, that's like the logo and stuff like that. Yeah, that's dope. I guess do you want to talk a little bit more about your label too? Like, uh, what's the aesthetic and I guess like mo of your label? Like, how did you decide that you're like okay, I'm gonna do this? Like, when did you have that like realization? And like, when did you decide that you wanted this to happen? Um, well, basically it started where I had, um, uh, I have a, a Tascam like four track mm-hmm. that I bought at the thrift store. Um, Ooh, for like what 20 year bucks. did you get that? What year? 
Uh, this was like 2017, 2018 probably. Isn't I got it that. Cascam 424, something of that range? Yeah, it's a 424 at Mark 1. Wow. Yeah, That's the price it. on those have really jumped up. So you got in at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's crazy because uh, I had a friend who would always go to the thrift stores and he posted on Instagram like the picture of the, the task cam at the thrift store. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh shit, I messaged him right away. Like, uh, is it, it, is it, um, is it still there? And he's like, yeah, I just left. And I like, I live like a block away from that thrift store. So I ran over and got it, bought it for 20 bucks. And then, uh, you know, just started to figure it out, how to, how to use it and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, at first I was just recording my own little demos on there. And then, and then I recorded a late bloomers album on it. And, and, um, from there I thought like, oh, I can like dub tapes and stuff like that. So I was making like short runs of tapes for late bloomers at first. And then I, you know, the light bulb like kind of turned on. I'm like, oh, I can do this for other people, and it could be like a cool thing I can do, and, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. So this was like rather recent, within the last like year or two, that you found that, I guess. Yeah, it's been a little bit over a year, I think. I think I started like, um, like January, February ish, kind of. I have to look back, but it's been over. It's probably been like eighteen months or something like that since I started. So is this something, I guess, like running a label, is this something that like you always kind of like wanted to do, like something in the back of your head? Or was it just kind of like you said, like you said earlier, that like realization that's like, hey, I can do this. I can like make a difference and help people. Um, no, I never had any thoughts of doing it until I had the like means to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Until I bought the, the tape, the four track. That's sick. So I guess like when you were deciding you're going to do it, like what, what was kind of like the aesthetic you're going for or kind of like, I guess, like your mission statement in a way? Um, well, the aesthetic, like, like how, like the logo, for instance, like, uh, I had Marcus, AKA Omega Nova, like help me with that. Oh yeah. Sick. Yeah. And, and he has sort of a style like of, of merch that he was like, cause at the time, uh, he was kind of like making shirts for his own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and his like aesthetic, he would, I think he would describe it as like construction, like company, like style, <laughs> like, like t-shirts and stuff like that. Yeah. And I thought that, I thought that was kind of cool. So I, he, cool. I had him like kind of do the logo and stuff like that. And um, uh, but then besides that, like my I guess mission statement it was just to, you know, like I always thought it was cool to have like physical merch and physical like media and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know it means a lot to people to be able to uh, do the thing, but a lot of times it's out of range of like you know people who don't maybe don't have enough money to do that because uh-huh. if you hit up a company to do it like they'll try to do like 250 bucks or something like that for sure like it's expensive turn around time yeah so yeah and so i thought it would be cool to be able to just do it like you know at, just do it on a, a small scale but have it be available to to like a lot of people whoever basically whoever wants to do it they can uh-huh. that's cool so um I guess, have there been like any like particular challenges like with the label or anything like that? Like anything that like you ran into like bumps or anything? <clears throat> um, have you noticed like a, a jump in like production costs or anything recently? Cause we've talked to a few people like uh, from different labels and stuff and they've been having issues like getting like, I guess materials and stuff to like produce the stuff for their label recently. Um, the only problem I can think of is just sometimes the, my source for like the blank tapes they come from China. So like, obviously there's been a lot of supply chain issues and and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So sometimes I won't have the right color and then I have to, you know, convince whoever to get a different cut. Yeah. uh, You know, find a different color, or you know, kind of, you know, compromise like you said. So I guess like, uh, that also brings up another point I want to ask like too. So you're having the artist like choose everything, like all the design concept and everything. So are you not really like curating as much that aspect of it or are you like leaving that up to the artist? Um, a lot of times they'll just give me like a, um, like an album cover. That's kind of like, you know, an even like eight by eight or something like that, Uh a square. And so I'll have to, a lot of times adapt that. And then like, um, you know, like do the layout of the J cards and and the covers and all that stuff, the inserts. Um, so I, I have a small hand of it, but I always like, I'm always just guided by whatever they say. Cause I'll like, I'll show them this. I'll use like this or do you like that? Uh-huh. You know, they just tell me and I kind of just go by whatever they say. That's cool. But, um, sometimes people like Marcus who are like, you know, really on it, they'll, they'll send me everything like a, what, like, you know, exactly formatted and yeah, like, yeah. just ready to go basically. Yeah. And I love, I love it when that happens. It makes it easier on me. Uh, but I also, I don't mind doing like a little bit of like graphic design or mm-hmm. like layout stuff. 
Would you say graphic it's design is your passion? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good answer. It's, it's, it's a chore. It's like yeah, a, it's a chore. To do. Dude, I feel that like for the last like few shows that I've had recently, I'm just like, ah, oh, dude, making flyers takes a lot of out of me, you know, like if I have to make if like one month, if there's a month where I have multiple shows, it's like, damn, I can like crank one flyer out. But it's like, dude, the other ones, like, I don't know if I have that much like artistic ability in me to like figure out what I'm going to design <laughs> for like the next like couple of like shows, you know, um, yeah. it's definitely a chore. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. Uh, so I guess I want to ask too, I guess like we can start talking about like your releases and everything. Um, you have any like future plans for the album? I know that you were saying that you have like a compilation coming out, um, before I guess like we get into like the compilation and stuff too. What, what else do you have coming up or like what, what did you release just recently? Like who have you helped out recently? Um, the last one I did, a like a re like a, a second batch of, uh, some tapes for a band called Bevaloon. They're kind oh, of nice. from uh, like um, the LA area, and uh, and uh, they're they're one of my favorite. Um, well, I know about them because I was in a band with uh, their bassist Jason, who's also in Los Retros. Oh, nice! Uh, oh, that's sick. I was in a band with him, so he kind of introduced me to them, and I and I really liked it. It's kind of like some jazz, like mm-hmm. like type stuff. It's good. Um, but that was the last thing I did. Uh, right now, I'm also working on other tape for uh for marcus with mega nova uh oh nice and, he's, and then like you said the compilation tape is another big uh is another big thing that i'm working on uh, so and, the, uh, i'm really excited for that the compilation tape is coming out like pretty soon i guess like do you want to talk a little bit more about that like what's it called and stuff and like who are you featuring um uh, it's going to be featuring just mostly local bands mm-hmm. uh, there's going to be one or two exceptions like velvet loon's going to be on there and they're not from like the 805 necessarily, but it's going to be mostly, like I said, 805 bands. Uh-huh. Um, it's going to be called Neighborhood Watch Volume 1. Sick. Uh, and yeah, like I said, it should. I'm just waiting on basically everyone to submit their tracks. And the cool thing about it is like a lot of the tracks are going to be like all like uh, like material prepared yeah. like for this, basically. Yeah. Like oh, just fantastic. new songs. That's sick. So yeah. it's like... Yeah, so I was really happy that... Go ahead. Oh, Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just really happy that people were were ready, like you know, willing to put something together, and uh, you know, in kind of a short period of time. That's cool that everybody's like kind of like making something special, like specifically for the comp. You know. Um, well, I, well, I will have to say I don't know if it's specifically, but it's new material. I don't know, like yeah. I know I know Marcus made one specifically, and then I know we kind of did one specifically for it, but. Uh, it is all new stuff. So I think that's, you know, that's definitely cool. That's cool. Yeah. I know Marvin has been like going back and forth. Like, what do you think? If, what do you think about this one? Like, what do you think about this one? And I'm just like, <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mar- Marvin. Yeah, Mar- yeah. I got, he gave me a track and it's, it's going to be good. Yeah, dude. I'm ex- I'm excited to hear it, dude. Who else do you have on there? Like, you know, I guess like shout out the lineup if you want to reveal that. If not, that's cool too. Oh, I can talk. I, I, um, so it's going to be join the internet, Marvin. Uh, shout out Marvin. Shout out Marvin, uh, dude. Sickest, boy- sickest in the game. <laughs> and uh, so, join the internet, boy, girl, uh, soul hex, uh, late bloomers. Um, what else? Omega Nova, Los Vigilantes, uh, Bonnie Boy, Los Solos, and I know I'm forgetting some. It's kind of a long. It's kind of long list, but that's like the majority of uh, I think who we're gonna have on there that's sick dude i actually have uh join the internet and bonnie boy on a show that's coming up in july as well i believe that's july 17th of the touring band called the mona reels um bonnie, oh, yeah, yeah. bonnie boy's really good dude oh yeah um i've not i i've known of them they've been playing a long time around here like uh, for the last probably like five six years maybe really? i didn't know they were around that long that's sick i th- i think uh my friend uh my friend hector i, I think we mentioned him in the in the late bloomers in, uh, mm-hmm. interview, but my friend Hector has been playing with them for a while, and I remember going to their shows. Yeah, probably like four years ago, like now. So they've been around for for a while. That's sick. I actually just met Hector. Um, Hector is really cool. I met him at uh, Patty's in Ventura. Um, he had like just gotten back from practicing with solos. Um, oh yeah, uh, Hector. I've known since uh, since high school too. So. That's sick, dude. 
Um, that's exciting that you have solos too, dude. Solos is fun. Yeah, I like that. yeah, they're good. Um, <laughs> I think they're they're going to be on your show on Sunday, or they're recording. I think they're recording for something for you on Sunday, and you're going to be on the next week, right? Yeah, they're going to be on the next week. Yeah, dude, solos are sick. I'm I'm okay. excited for that. That'll be fun. Oh, uh, so I I guess like another thing I want to talk to you about your label is that like you you like aren't really afraid to like I guess jump into different genres. Like you have like a lot of different genres on the label. Um, a lot of different genres on the comp, like you have hip hop, like Omega Nova, and I believe Los Vigilantes, and um, you know you have soul, you have like indie, you have like everything. Oh yeah, well that was kind of the idea. I didn't want to like like exclude any kind of you know anything based on the genre of it. Mm-hmm. Like okay. like I said, I wanted this. I wanted this to be kind of like for everybody. Um, and like I said, I don't. I don't like to turn anyone down usually uh, for like a tape or anything. You know, if they want to do it, then they hit me up and then get it going. You know, it's not, I didn't want to be like, you know, some sort of, you know, gatekeeper or anything like yeah. that. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's sick, dude. Uh, do you have any like noise releases coming up or have you done, done any like noise releases or anything like experimental? Just the one for Nina Spears. Nice. Uh, Nina Spears, I mean. Yeah, Nina, Nina Spheres is sick, dude. Um, their music is insane. I saw them play like coaxial like a few weeks ago, and it was wild. Yeah, but he's lucky, like a genius. Like he's always been like. Yeah, you're just... you're like you you're like friends with them. You I remember you saying that you used to have like some projects with them for a while, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I met him, uh, probably like in 2016 ish, mm-hmm. and off off like a Craigslist ad to join a band, and the band Whoa. fell through. But uh, but we can, I continue to work with him. Like he recorded the first like Bay Bloomers like EP and a lot of Soul Hex stuff that he helped out with. And he's just always been like, um, you know, just doing it up. You know what I mean? Like yeah, for sure. Always, you know, yeah. yeah, I also think he's cool too because like he was at uh, KDVS for a while, so he was kind of like a, a radio homie as well. Which is oh sick. yeah, yeah. He was at UC Davis for a while. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, like doing that stuff. Um. Well, that's sick, Alex. I, I guess that's kind of like uh, all the questions I had about like the label specifically. Was there anything else that you wanted to mention before like we moved on? Uh, no, just keep your you know keep keep you guys, keep your eyes out for the comp for the compilation. And Hell yeah, it should be good. That's and good. I guess like you're saying, so you're also I guess open to anybody like submitting something to you or hitting you up for a tape or something. Like, where can people? Yeah, um just on my on the instagram page um you know just message me there and we can go from there tight dude sounds good so i guess that kind of like brings us towards the end of the interview here we do have one listener question and it says are you ready for it Mm -hmm. best spot to eat in the oxnard ventura 805 area oh man that's hard there's so much good stuff for real that's uh i'll just say like uh i'll just say jungle juice in oxnard off saviors oh uh, what kind of food it's like a, a You're doing a jungle it's juice. kind of like a juice bar really it's kind of like, like a juice bar but they but they sell but they sell like tortas like sandwiches and stuff there uh really good and then um i'd probably have to also shout out uh coin la vaca which is another mexican spot and I have really good food. Like you can tell that the meat is like made with love. So it's like the best. <laughs> oh. It was a happy cow. Um, that's sick. So, uh, I, I guess we have one more too that I want to bring up. Um, can you talk about your love for, uh, wrestling? Oh, wrestling. Uh, yeah, I, I'm Lean really, <laughs> we, <laughs> well, I, I've been, re- I've been watching like, uh, I was watching WWE for a while with, again, my friend Raul, like we watch, uh, We'd watch Monday Night Raw, like we'd get together and you know, drink beers and, and uh oh. watch Monday Night Raws on Monday. Mm-hmm. And then we did that for a while, but then kind of WWE kind of fell off for a while and I kind of uh like got out of it. I wasn't really paying much attention. Uh-huh. But then uh, when I started dating my uh, uh now wife, she she was really into wrestling, so she kind of came back into it. And really, uh, that's sick. You know, we watched this uh yeah, she's she had way knows way more about it than me. Uh, she's like way more like you know from she was like a kid and you know her and her brother would watch it all the time but uh that's dope she got she kind of like got me back into it and uh and now we kind of watch there's a show called uh 
AEW, mm-hmm. which is a new promotion. A newer promotion has been around for like a couple of years now, but um, that's the main one we watch because WWE has kind of fallen off. It's not as like it's not as entertaining anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, AEW is the one that we watch all the time. We watch like you know all the shows and we do the pay per views and you know. While I while I don't follow wrestling, I know people that do, and I have heard a distinct level of frustration with some of the WWE arcs and people that will, you know, sit through the whole day of AEW stuff. And again, just excuse for a drinking day and have the greatest time of their life. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Um, that's pretty much what we use it for. It's a chance to uh, order some pizza and, you know, eat a bunch uh, of junk food and, you know, watch, watch a bunch of dudes slime each other and stuff. That's sick. So uh, I have a few friends that are not into like WWE, but they're into like UFC. Are you like into that at all? Is that like similar? I don't really know. Um, when Brock Lesnar was was in it and he went in championships, I was into it because he was also a wrestler. And like, uh, I just thought it was cool that he was like uh, that kind of athlete who was like a legitimate, like he can legit like beat somebody up and uh, stuff like that. Uh, but that was the only time I really paid attention to it when when Brock Lesnar was like, you know, at the top of the game, mm-hmm. that's winning sick. championships and stuff. Yeah, that's dope. But other than that, yeah, it's, it's kind of I don't like to. <laughs> cause like every once in a while, you'd be watching UFC and random, and like randomly, someone will like break their leg on on someone else's leg, or like you know, get their like arm like torn out by somebody else. And I don't know, I'd rather not rather not see that. Dude, UFC is like really gnarly. Actually, like my friends will show me highlights and stuff, and sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to see that, dude. Like the guy that like kicked the other guy's shin, it like broke in half or something. I think that's what you literally yeah, that's just the, referenced. Yeah. Did, um, did you watch a uh, fighting in the age of loneliness? What was that? Have you seen fighting in the age of loneliness? No, I haven't. Yeah, you should watch that. It's like a two, two and a half hour, five part documentary about the UFC. It's fire. Is it actually? Oh. It's. Thomas, I don't care about UFC, and this makes you excited for UFC. <laughs> there is, there's like an actual like argument being made about American culture and how great UFC was, and then how it totally just collapsed in on itself by making several terrible marketing decisions yeah. that have ruined just the purity of the insanity of watching people just punch each other. <laughs> I have watched UFC. I'd go over to my friend's house and he and his dad be watching it and his dad would be pausing and rewinding to show us bits where, you know, things went hog wild. It's great. On one end, UFC is great. On the other end, yeah, they're not treating those players right. They don't get paid. <laughs> they don't get paid? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. It's it's a bracket. It's basically a, a Venmo money bracket. <laughs> really dude yeah my friends are into it they like will bet money on this stuff dude they're in like those betting agency things like it's wild dude it's honestly like yeah it's a huge thing um anyways alex so i guess like before we end the fan questions here name your favorite wrestler real quick my favorite wrestler uh right now well of all time or just like current i guess i got both yeah both Well, I got my uh, my friend Stone Cold Steve Austin right here. Hell yeah! Uh, probably my favorite of all time. Uh, currently, I'd have to say I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this guy in AEW named MJF, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Probably my favorite right now. Dope. Cool. Is he just in, like a monster? Like, no, he's kind of like a Manhattan. He, his character is like a Manhattan, like r- spoiled rich kid, and oh. uh, his and like. Um, yeah, basically his like catch line is like I'm better than you and you know it. And <laughs> it's classic. And it's great. It's crazy because uh there's actually like a, a promotion, a wrestling promotion around here in Oxnard or in Wainimi actually, uh called Hollywood Wrestling. Oh really? And um I went they have they have uh, you know the shows at, at this place called the Ocean View Pavilion, mm-hmm. which is also where like they're having I think there's a hardcore show maybe this week or next week with Dead Heat. They're oh, also playing interesting. At this place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they they started to have shows, but 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 anyways, like I saw this, uh, I went to a random show um, with my wife, and like we saw him there and went before he was like famous or anything like that, and I was just like, damn, this guy's crazy. And then like a couple of years later, we see him as like the biggest star on, on this like new promotion AEW, and we're just like, damn, it's crazy. We saw him before like uh, he, he was famous and stuff. Dude, that's actually like really sick. So is he like local then, or is he was just like part of the local promotion thing? No, he it's. 
these a lot of these it's like an independent promotion so like mm -hmm. um if you're not in the wwe or like some of the other bigger ones you you, you go around and doing you go around and do like indie uh independent like wrestling mm. shows basically and like he happened to stop by or like not stop by but like be be a part of that for however long oh interesting Dude, and, that's sick. and then uh and what was even more funny about that show is uh um david arquette like rolled up and sat like a couple of seats from us oh really because he's super into he's super into wrestling and uh yeah he showed up randomly and he was wearing a wu-tang shirt and i thought that was funny dude that's honestly sick yeah all right Alex. Yeah, it was, it was, it was funny. that's cool dude well i guess that kind of like brings us to the end of uh the interview here um we do have one more question though it's kind of the most important one and you have answered it on the late bloomers one but are you ready to answer it one more time yeah sure <laughs> do you want to take it maddie thomas this is all you go for it <laughs> okay so a rat is going to jump into your mouth alex do you want this rat to jump into your mouth head first or butt first and why uh what well, I think, I don't even know what I said last time. Probably head first. <laughs> so I can, I don't even know, man. <laughs> just head first because I don't, I don't, uh, the other end just seems almost just, I don't know, even worse. <laughs> the last it's guy. It's a bad we, situation, but I think the tail. That's dope. Yeah. Ahead. The last guy we had on the show, he said that he wants it to go head first because it'd be more aerodynamic and he's trying to take that thing whole. Um, and I was like, Damn. oh, I can see, I can see. It might be a smoother, it might be a smoother. Like if you plan on eating it, it might be a smoother like trip down the down the esophagus. Exactly, uh, dude. Smoother delivery, dude. You know how like a snake will, yeah, because you know how a snake will, will eat the rat's head first. Is, oh, that's a like it's just easier yes. for them to. That's a down. thing. I didn't know that, dude. That's interesting. Yeah, dude, definitely. Go away, go away. Yeah. We gotta. Uh, take... Yeah, so I'll, I'll take. I'll I'll do the snake method. I'll head first. Hell yeah, dude. That's what we like to hear. Well, um, I think that's all we have for today. Thanks for tuning into Lied Talks Demands. Remain unwritten on KCSB FM 91.9 on Sunday 6 to 8 p.m. And this is Alex Gonzalez from Pleasant Valley and Late Bloomers. Thanks for being on the show again, Alex. Yeah, thanks.